Good evening. Welcome to Ozarks Tonight. I'm Brian Calfano, joined by Democrat State Minority Leader Crystal Quaid, representing District 132 here in the Springfield area. It's always good to have you Thank on. Thank you. It's always great to be here. Appreciate your time. And let's get right into it. And let's get into the weeds here on this issue, because I'm watching this and I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? There are, what, 100,000 Missourians who were kicked off Medicaid in the last year or two? About 127,000 in the last 19 months. Wow. All right. So what is behind all this? Well, um, there's lots of different theories. Um, I'm someone who believes it's probably a little bit of all of the things that, that we've been hearing. Um, you know, we first started seeing these uh, the increase in numbers of folks not being on Medicaid um, early fall of last year. Um, so the state of Missouri was not following federal guidelines in making sure that folks qualified for Medicaid on a yearly basis. And so um, we should be doing that. The uh, administration started doing that um, with a rollout of a new computer program. So every year, if you've been on Medicaid, you have to go through a requalification process? Essentially, yes. So you'll send in your paycheck stubs. Um, it's a 10-page form. Um, I actually saw it for the first time last week um, that verifies your income. You have to send in paycheck stubs and you know verify how many children you have and make sure that you still fall in the income guidelines to qualify for Medicaid whether that's as an adult um, or for the children um, that are covered for Medicaid their parents would then have to fill out this form so um, we started doing the reauthorizations um, as we should and um, essentially from the things that I have garnered the administration sent out letters to folks who were on Medicaid some folks are saying they didn't receive the letters um, um, some people received the letters and and then would send back in the information. Um, the department may not have received the information. Um, and so once the letter was sent, you have a 10-day window to resend in your information to prove that you still qualify. And, and there's no, oh, we got your information. I mean, you just had to trust that the USPS is doing its thing. Right? Yes. Okay. And so then um, what was happening is the administration was not getting the information back within that 10-day window. And so then folks are cut off of Medicaid at that point. And are they given an additional letter saying that they're cut off at they that are yes they are supposed to be now what I'm hearing from an array of people is some folks aren't receiving any letters some folks are only receiving the cutoff notice some folks I had one woman receive four different letters on the same day one saying that she had to pay more in her premium because a lot of folks especially for children for our chip program um, people are paying monthly premiums to be on that program um, so we saw an increase in some of those premiums so one woman received an increased letter a turn in your information letter and a cutoff letter and another letter all in the same day. Are there um, phone numbers you can call? I mean, I know it's the yes. state. We don't so, have a ton of operators. So, but so that's where we're seeing a lot of the problems. So continuing the conversation, you know, we started seeing this decline and folks started calling into offices saying this is what the problem, you know, we're majority of the citizens that I'm hearing from didn't know that they lost coverage until they go into the doctor's office. So we saw a big boom right before school started when kids were going in to get their immunizations of then them realizing, oh, you don't have health care coverage anymore. Now in our region, uh, we have Jordan Valley Health Clinic, which is an amazing resource, and they have the ability to, um, to check and make sure and assume, it's called assumptive eligibility, that these children still qualify, and so they'll go ahead and treat them. Um, so we have several hundred of those across the state so there there is a way for folks to continue to see their doctor but we've also seen well who gets the bill then I mean let's say that you presume yes. that they're covered they get treated does that responsibility ultimately fall on the parent to pay the bill well it will go once they are finally approved um, then it will retroactively cover that what if they're not approved then the parent is responsible for that um, and where, where we also see an issue is medications are not um, pre-authorized essentially so if you've got a kiddo who's on an asthma treatment medication every day um, they may be pre-approved to go to the doctor but their medication is not and so that's where we're really seeing the issue is a, a lapse in medical treatment particularly for for families who have to take something every day to continue a treatment that they're on and the state government's going eh, oops we well, don't know it's just something's happening I don't want to necessarily say that um, I will very honestly say that um, the the director Director of Medicaid, Todd Richardson, has been uh, very available for me. He and I have met multiple times to try to discuss this. But you have a bit of a concern because the numbers are really high. The numbers are very high. And I think the highest in the country or among the highest among in the country? Among the highest in the country, yes. Are people being kicked off? Yes. So to your question of the administration just saying, hey, um, depending on who you talk to, um, we're getting different answers for what's going on. So 
a lot of folks believe that the um, information is just not being turned back in, whether that's people not receiving the forms or um, them not turning them back in. Um, so that, that is a big chunk of the problem that we know. Um, there are some folks saying that people are just choosing not to hel have health care coverage anymore, which is a hard one for me to get behind. Um, and then, of course, the, the economy has improved. So there are a handful of folks who just are not eligible anymore. So, um, you know, it's, I believe it's a combination of all of these things. But what I can tell you, um, I have been pushing for us to have an investigative hearing from the House side because I believe it's our job to, to hold the, uh, the other branches accountable and we do that often. We have a lot of investigative uh, committee hearings into department actions. And since we have this astronomical number, um, I believe it's something that we should be digging into. Um, those That hearing has not been called, so I held my own meeting, uh, essentially. It's and, too bad you can't call a special session. <laughs> wouldn't that? wouldn't that be, that'd be great. Um, so we had our own meeting while we were in Jefferson City for a special session since everybody was there. And we invited um, folks on the ground who are seeing this issue. So we had a lot of the legal aid um, Actually, each region came. We had um, some providers on the ground come and talk. And we also had a couple citizens just come and talk about their experience. What I can tell you is our legal aid groups who, um, those folks are utilized when, say, I apply for Medicaid and I'm denied, but I still believe that I should be covered, I can reach out to them and they will help me navigate this system. Um, we had um, the Eastern region say that they've had 200 um, kids that they've worked with to try to get them back on, and 199 of them were still income eligible. So these are not folks who um, are losing coverage because of an increase in, in wages um, or simply because they don't want it. 199 of the 200 that they have worked with just in that region. So while you're all working this out in Jeff City, advice would be if you're on Medicaid now, check. Definitely. Make so, sure you check your status. Yes. We've got to take a quick break. We're talking with Representative Crystal Quaid. She is the state minority leader in the House up there in Jeff City, and she's talking about Medicaid with us. We'll be right back.